Hi, I'm Stormy O'Mardian, and I'm talking today from my book, Lead Me Holy Spirit. This is episode two, Led to Receive All God Has for You. Every person who receives Jesus has the Holy Spirit in his life. Anyone who says he does not have the Holy Spirit has not received Jesus. The Bible says no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. That's from 1 Corinthians 12, 3. It also says if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. That's from Romans 8, 9. So don't think you do not have the Holy Spirit working in your life. He drew you to God in the first place. When you trusted in Jesus, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It says that in Ephesians 1.13. When we receive Jesus, he gives us the Holy Spirit of God to dwell in us. We don't have Jesus living with us in the flesh. Jesus is now at the right hand of his Father God, but we do have his Spirit living in us now. The Holy Spirit was present and active at creation when the earth was without form and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. It says that in Genesis 1, 1 and 2. He is powerfully evident throughout the Bible, clear up to nearly the end, where the Spirit and the Bride say, come, it says in Revelation 22, 17. I'm not talking about specific movements and manifestations of the Holy Spirit that we see through the Bible. I'm talking about everyone who receives Jesus has his Spirit in him or her and can be led by his Spirit every day. The seal of our being born again is the Holy Spirit in us. He is the proof. It's a done deal. He doesn't ever leave unless we leave him first. Jesus, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, it says in Luke 1.35, asked John the Baptist to baptize him in water, not because he needed to repent for his sins, since he was sinless, but because he knew the Holy Spirit would come upon him, and he had to have that empowerment in order to move into his coming ministry. When Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens opened up and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. It says that in Matthew 3, 16. Before Jesus was crucified, he said to his disciples, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. It says that in John 16, 7. So the Holy Spirit was promised. After his resurrection and before he ascended into heaven, Jesus said to them, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That's from Acts 1, 8. So there's a direct correlation between the Holy Spirit and power. If Jesus' disciples and followers needed an outpouring of his Spirit upon them in order to be empowered to do what God was calling them to do, how much more do we? The Holy Spirit could not come to dwell in people until Jesus died for us and went to the Father. That's because Jesus had to pay for our sins by his death and resurrection so we could be declared righteous. The Holy Spirit cannot dwell in an unsanctified person, but we are made pure by the righteousness of Jesus when we receive him. Therefore, the Holy Spirit can dwell in us. Does this mean no one had the Holy Spirit before Jesus' death and resurrection? The Holy Spirit was obviously at work throughout the Old Testament, but it was in connection with God empowering certain people to do specific things. But the Holy Spirit was not sent to indwell all believers the way he does in believers since the time Jesus ascended into heaven. Jesus said, anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him. That's from Matthew 12, 32. He spoke of that as the unpardonable sin. 
the unpardonable sin is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Anyone who has received Jesus and has the Holy Spirit in them is not going to reject their helper, guide, comforter, and the source of everything good in their lives. Anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit would have to be so sold out to the devil and his heart so hardened against God that he is completely given over to the enemy's camp and wouldn't care whether he had blasphemed him. Anyone who has opened his or her heart to Jesus, who has the Holy Spirit in them, would never reject him. It would be unthinkable. If he said there is an unforgivable sin, then we must take him at his word. We all need the Holy Spirit working through us in ways that make it possible for us to do things we could not do on our own. That's why we cannot think of the Holy Spirit as an accessory to our life. He is our life. We are dependent on him working through us in order to live the life he wants us to live. The reason God desires that you be led by his spirit is because he wants to take you to places you will never arrive at without him. You need Jesus in order to have a deep relationship with God. You need the Holy Spirit to help you become all you were created to be and do, all you were called to do. It's a decision you must make to receive all that the Holy Spirit has for you. He will never impose himself on you. He never violates your will. He waits to be invited to work powerfully in your life. Jesus said he came to give you a more abundant life. It says that in John 10.10. 10. That doesn't mean a life of five-star first-class vacations. It doesn't mean a six-car garage, a diamond-studded coffee table, enough clothes to never wear the same thing twice, and money to burn. It means an abundance of whatever you need in order to live the life of purpose God has for you. One of the things you need is to be a whole person. In order to do that, you must claim the freedom in Christ he has for you. The Holy Spirit will always lead you to liberation from anything that separates you from God and keeps you from becoming all he made you to be. While Jesus forgave us all our sins of the past when we received him, there are still habits of thought, emotion, and action that need to be submitted to the cleansing work of his Holy Spirit, and we are still capable of sin and suffering the consequences. But God has given us a way to be free of all that. It's called being in his presence. And I want you to remember the following 16 words for the rest of your life and act accordingly. The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's from 2 Corinthians 3.17. Say those words out loud as many times as you need to in order to feel that truth sink deeply into your soul and memory. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of liberation, and just being in his presence brings freedom. The Bible tells us that when God was present, people were often prostrate. They could not stand before him. The light was too bright for them to even look at, his presence too powerful for them to bear. In fact, they could be consumed in his presence. Because we cannot bear God's presence either. He gives us his Holy Spirit to be with us. In the presence of the Holy Spirit, we are warmed and energized in his light and fire and not burned up by it. The more time you spend in his presence, the freer you become. Jesus is the deliverer who came to set us free. And the Holy Spirit continues to lead us into ever-increasing freedom and liberation in Christ. That is freedom from the enemy of our soul, from the lure of the world, and from our own dangerous and self-destructive thoughts and habits and actions. The enemy wants to keep us in bondage, but Jesus has already said the ruler of this world is judged. It says that in John 16, 11. 
He is defeated in your life now. And the only way he can have any influence is by getting you to believe his lies. Some of us experience pain and suffering because of bad things that happen to us through no fault of our own, and we're entirely out of our control. Jesus has total healing and restoration for all of that. But some of us suffer from problems that are our own fault, and none of us can live with the guilt we carry in ourselves over the ways we have strayed from God's intention for our lives. Guilt destroys us. Our shoulders weren't built to carry it. Too often we don't feel that we have any guilt, but sometimes we do, whether we recognize it or not. The Apostle Paul said, my conscience is clear. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. That's from 1 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Paul also said, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Romans 8.1. When you are led by the Holy Spirit, he will guide you away from guilt and condemnation and the enemy's lies and toward confession, repentance, and a renewed heart before him. Often the pain in our lives comes from a lack of intimacy with God. And the only way we can experience that intimacy is to be in close communication with him. The Holy Spirit will lead you there because the Holy Spirit of God is in you. It means you are never alone. You are never hopeless. You are never powerless because he is in you and with you wherever you go. He is never distant. His spirit is as close as your own heartbeat. Whenever you need to have a greater sense of his presence, get quiet before him and pray. You can get free of anything that is not God's will for your life. If you have not gotten free of whatever binds you, keep seeking his presence. You may not have gotten free yet, but you will. Once you are free of something, ask the Holy Spirit to help you stay free. Paul said, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. It says that in Galatians 5.1. He was talking about not trying to be justified by what we do, but rather whom we know, Jesus. We have to stand fast in all that Christ has done to free us and not allow anything to take away that liberty. God wants you to be more like him. That's why the Holy Spirit will always be leading you toward becoming more whole. You must be filled afresh with the fullness of his Holy Spirit, so he can permeate you with all that he is. We had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and does deliver us, in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. That's from 2 Corinthians 1, 9 and 10. You know, there's a lock on one of my suitcases that is difficult to unlock. First, I have to dial in the right combination, but then I have to pull down on the latch extremely hard in order to open it. And when I wasn't sure I had the right combination, I didn't pull it hard enough because I was afraid I was going to break the lock. But once I knew for certain I had the correct combination, I felt emboldened to pull on that latch as hard as I could, knowing the lock would open. But I would never have pulled on it that hard if I didn't know for sure I had the right combination. And often we don't open up to all God has for us because we don't understand how it works. So many people do that with the Holy Spirit because they don't understand all the Holy Spirit of God wants to do in their lives if they would just let him lead them. Would you pray with me about this? Lord, enable me to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, so that I may be filled with all the fullness of you, as it says in your word. I don't ever want to take lightly the fact that you have sent your spirit to dwell in me, to guide and help me live the life you have for me, 
Teach me the deep things you want me to know from your word. Help me to hear the leading of your spirit telling me the way to walk. Give me understanding about all you want to do in and through me. Thank you, God, that you are always with me. Help me to know you better every day. Keep me from allowing anything in my heart and life that would grieve you. Help me to always be sensitive to your leading. Enable me to receive the wholeness you have for me. Thank you for always leading me toward greater freedom from everything that keeps me from becoming all you created me to be. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the spirit of liberation, and wherever you are, there is liberty. Liberate me from anything in me or around me that is not your will for my life. Set me free from every evil work. Help me to resist being pulled into a way of life that is not up to your standards. Fill me afresh with your love and peace and power today. Make me whole from the inside out. Cleanse my heart from anything that is not of you. Burn away all darkness by the brightness of your light in me. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. Speak to me, Holy Spirit, and tell me what I need to know. Give me a greater sense of your presence. Quiet my mind. Heal every negative emotion. Speak to my heart and crowd out of me the things that are not of you. Help me to open up to all you have for me. In Jesus' name, I pray. You know, there's a window in our house that is hard to open, and I would have had to turn the handle very hard in order to open it. When we first moved into the house, I did not want to break the window by using that much force to turn the handle, and I assumed the window latch must be broken. So for months, I never opened the window. And one day, somebody showed me how hard I needed to turn it in order to open it, and I never had a problem with it again. I could have been enjoying fresh air all those months, but because I didn't know the truth, I never opened the window. My point is that too often, because we don't understand the truth in our lives, we don't give enough effort toward opening up and possessing what is there for us. We have to know the truth about what is possible for us and what to do to make it happen in our lives. When you know what the truth is, and you know what the promise is, you can press in harder than you might normally do in order to receive what has already been provided for you. And that's the way it is with being led by the Holy Spirit in our lives. Learn about Him. Draw near to Him. Speak to Him. He wants to lead you to all God has for you.